Well, there's the cage I don't have to stay in. I was gonna start recording inside there because I didn't see any reason not to, but there was another criminal behind me waiting to be booked in and it looked like everybody was waiting for me to leave before they went on to the next step with the next uh, citizen, member of the public who transgressed. Uh, and then I had to call them back and be like, hey, you didn't give me my driver's license. And the nice lady came out and gave me my driver's license. I'm glad I checked. I checked all my other stuff. Looks like I still have uh, all my possessions as far as I was able to see. Uh, they were good about it last time, but this is a different department. Um, and uh, I did not, I did not press record. Uh, so I got approached immediately today at the airport by the Tucson Airport Authority Police Department Sergeant Mark Meredith, who again was pretty short and uh, like poorly communicating about how I was just a bad person and I should know better. And, uh, and after refusing to answer questions about uh, his previous statements that the, or, or his current belief that the airport was owned by a private nonprofit and that it was private property, uh, he told me I was being detained and I had to identify, or actually, he, I believe he tried to get me to identify before telling me I was detained. Uh, I gave him my full legal name as required under Arizona statute to identify once he threatened me with arrest. I wasn't going to identify because as I informed him, the statute says that you must be lawfully detained in order to be required to identify yourself. Uh, and so, so I told him that I'm uh, not going to. And then uh, he said that he would arrest me. So I was like, okay, well then good enough. Like I'll, that's, he's going to double down on his belief that the detention is lawful by arresting me, by threatening to arrest me. So under threat of arrest, I identified myself and he asked me my date of birth and I said nothing. And then he went over the radio that I refused to identify. And I said, I did not refuse to identify. I gave you my full legal name as required by the statute. So I don't know, do I want to run down the whole stinking heap of garbage that happened to, to end up with me being arrested and brought to Pima County Jail and released at pretrial, which I, I knew that would happen. I would have tried to, I would have just left again and uh, kind of put a few more ducks into some rows before pushing the issue if I had thought that I would actually end up staying in jail. But at this point, uh, having beat the charge on the last arrest and having no other record and knowing that they're not liking to keep people in jail these days because they want to spend the money. I don't know what, I don't know what, they're just not. And, and uh, so, I don't know, so it ended up with, uh, with them saying that they were going to arrest me Tell, uh, oh, oh, well, him, him just insisting that I was refusing to identify when I identified by statute. The statute doesn't say that you have to provide your, your birth date. He's just like misinformed again. And it ended up with them saying they were arresting me and okay. So this time I didn't resist because that's trouble. Uh, now, I mean, when they were clearly going to cuff me, at first they were going to cuff me for detention. And then for some reason, I forget exactly how that went, they ended up saying I was arrested. And so I calmly went into the cuffs and they still, at one point while they're putting the cuffs on me, fumbling around, having a difficult time getting the cuffs on, they're like, don't move, sir. I'm standing dead still with my arms limp behind my back so that they can put their cuffs on. And they're like, don't move, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm not moving as, as much as is humanly possible right now. <laughs> Nightshade. 
silver leaf nightshade. Oh, oh, there's a lot of it around the jail. So if the people get out, they get poisoned anyway. Oh, am I wrong? Yeah, yeah, that's not the nightshade. Not at all. Never mind. Uh, and so they were going to cite and release. I asked for a supervisor prior to being arrested. I, I was hoping that a supervisor could come and clarify the nature of the property, the nature of public access prior to them going ahead and arresting me. And uh, the, the supervisor did eventually come. The sergeant said, the manager said, uh, that I would get that, that I would get a supervisor, but they were still going to go ahead and start searching through my stuff and run my name. And I, I just, I wasn't thinking of getting arrested today. I didn't like leave my driver's license at home or anything. And, uh, so, so they ended up with that. And, uh, even though like full legal name is, is all that's required, they should have been able to run that. They just like the date of birth because it makes it easier. I don't have a common name. Like, I don't see how, they don't need that at all. Like, anyway, they just wanted it. And, you know, at this point, I just believe that that manager is that mistaken. Because it, it, it proved out today. The, the, the supervisor came, a lieutenant. I totally did not process his name did not put it into short-term or long-term or mid-term memory. Do not remember at all what he was called, but he was a, he was a stinking heap of garbage. He came to, to be a supervisor and refused to answer basic questions. He said it was private property. I asked him three times, I think owned by whom, and his response was consistently, I'm not getting into that with you. I tried to bring up the airport authority myself and its nature as a, a, a civil nonprofit. Uh, and he just, he was just there to stonewall. That's all he did. He, and, and in the meantime, he decided to stop talking to me. And Sergeant Marks said, came up with the paperwork that they were gonna cite and release me. So they were gonna cite and release. So basically, you, you get the infraction, you're not going in cuffs and being carted anywhere in their vehicle, uh, but you still are going to court. Well, he's trying to read me this, or tell me something about this paperwork, while the lieutenant, who's there to supposedly be a supervisor, is just refusing to answer my questions. And, and so he's just blank facing me and Mark's, Mark is uh, repeatedly telling me, okay, I have two things for you. And I told him to shut up. And he said, all right, we're booking him. So contempt of cop for that uh, escalation of the situation. And just utter stupidity all the way around. Like, the, is that their defense? Like, that they're just stupid? Like, they don't know... And I asked him at one point, would you guys, are you, are you more, would you say that you're more stupid or more corrupt? And honestly, I didn't expect any kind of a real answer out of that. But it's a legitimate question. I genuinely don't know. I want to know, is the Tucson Airport Authority Police Department more stupid or more corrupt? And I got to say, it, it seems more likely that, they're, that they're, they're corrupt and they're doing what they can get away with because they've gotten away with it. And so... Well, we'll have an opportunity to uh, give them some feedback through the court system. I have court in February. Uh, I think it was the 28th even, like the end of February for the first court date, which means, like I told them in the airport, like this is how they get what they want. They want me not to be there. They claim that the law supports that. Uh, it's not actually true. Rather than like getting into that with me at the airport, they just arrest me and send me on my way. So they did end up booking me because I told, because I told that guy to shut up. They booked me and brought me to Pima County. 
Hello, good morning. And so they get what they want. They, they don't want me there. They get to just go ahead and have that for, as I told them, six months. They're going to push the court date out as long as they can, you know, without uh, implicating habeas corpus or something. I mean, I guess it's not habeas corpus if I'm not in custody, but whatever, a speedy trial. I don't actually know which direction I'm going. I thought that the way I wanted to go was this way. Is that Stonehenge up there? Okay. I would have definitely taken a wrong turn if I was by Stonehenge. Um, given that it's morning... ...ish, still, what time is it? I don't even know. 10 o'clock? then that way is east <laughs> and i want to go north wait so i'm going the right way because that's east and i want to go north i believe i want to go north yes at star pass boulevard i want to go north yes okay anyway uh i did not bother to get the gimbal out to make this a steady video i thought it was just going to be quick but then i started running my mouth which gets me in trouble get me arrested Um, and, and I meant to double, I was actually, I got to the airport, I was going to sit down, uh, top up some devices, make sure things were charged, uh, make sure the phone was all happy about connecting to the interwebs and wasn't going to throw a whole bunch of notifications if I suddenly wanted to go live, uh, get everything uh, ready to go to see what my plan was, was to go around and see if the police were actually a visible presence at the airport. I want, uh, because I started to real, I realized yesterday that the only times I'd seen them before was when something was going on. They got a call about me, or there was a medical emergency. And so they showed up for that. And you know, this is just very West-like, very Western situation out here. Star Pass, Mission Road, Santa Cruz, River Park. Yes, I'm going to go this way. Oh, yeah, there's town. I see it. <laughs> Almost missed that. <laughs> So yeah, I was just going to see if they generally stay behind the scenes because I'd kind of developed that theory that they don't intentionally, that it's not part of their practice or their protocol to be a visual deterrent by actually having their members stationed throughout the, the airport or visible on, on, on the day to day and that their cars just kind of serve that because they're always parked at either end of the, the doors where people go in, the, the ticketing and, and baggage claim and all that. And so when you go in there, you know that the, the police are there. And I was thinking that maybe that's how they do it. And they don't just have those officers and, and such walking around or standing around. And so I was going to check that out. And, you know, the, I didn't have the scanner on. He was on the radio coming up to me. Uh, I'm down here in East Quadrant, Baggage 7, da, 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 Concourse, da, 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 whatever. And, uh, and I'm like, wow, okay. I guess they noticed me and they're going to talk to me. And his first question was, are you flying out today? And throughout the course of that interaction, I asked all three of the officers. I mean, let's see. I don't think I asked the lieutenant. So there were, there were two Officer Montoya from previously, another guy whose name I didn't get. I, I didn't ask anybody's name and badge number this time. But the third guy, who I hadn't seen before, actually ended up seeming like a straight up dude. Like he was just talking to me, trying to understand some stuff. Didn't seem like he was just running mumbo jumbo on me the way 
a lot of officers do with their words. Like you seem like a, you seem like a decent guy. Um, but I don't know his name. But I asked them all. Like they all mention this legitimate business like it's a stone cold fact. If you have legitimate business, you can be in the airport. And I'm like, where is that written? Is it a policy? Is it a statute? Is it an ordinance? No response from anybody. They're just like, it's just how it is. It's just how it is. What is that? I mean, to, is, it, is it generous to say that that's just bad training? Or is that dangerous? And you're ignoring the fact that that is extreme. That would be so extreme if they were just so poorly trained that there's this thing that there's no law about that they go around enforcing not knowing any better and nothing has ever happened to draw their attention to it. Like what? <laughs> that airport's been there a while. That police department has been serving it for a while. They know what's up with legitimate business at the airport. It's a fiction. It's a folk tale. It's a thing they can say to people that sounds truthy. And they have no answer. I mean, uh, granted, like an officer on, on duty isn't necessarily going to know the statutes for all the laws that he enforces. Isn't going to know all the statutes for all the laws he enforces. Or she. It's just not a thing. But I mean, none of them could say anything about whether it was even a policy, an ordinance, or a statute. Or where they had ever seen it written. I mean, it's just, it's not, it's just not a thing. So he asked that and I asked him why he was asking me. So, and I picked up my body cam, which was sitting next to me, pointing outward. And late, and I recorded that first part of that uh, interaction. And later I went, hey, wait, uh, it's gotten kind of automatic for me to push the button to record. And now I don't remember whether I did that or not. I still don't, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. I didn't check. I checked that it wasn't still recording when I got it back, which seems to me to say that I didn't actually push the button. So I'm holding the body camera up while I'm talking, having this first part of that whole scene. And I'm pretty sure it just wasn't running. And whatever, they all had body cams. Uh, the sergeant refused to answer my question as to whether he had one and whether it was on. He refused to, he was just doing nothing for me. He was answering nothing. He was just like stonewall the whole way. He does not like me, right? So he's just getting all butt hurt and refusing to, to answer simple questions. He doesn't have to. You'll have your day in court. You'll hear that phrase from him a lot when I get the body cam. And this time I'm going to, I will pay my public agency to provide me with public records. Oh my gosh, they better give me better service when I give them more money, right? Like, I just think that's, I think it's ridiculous. And there, the whole idea is that, well, these digital processing, these digital records and putting them on a medium costs money so they're going to charge you like the cost of a factory cd to receive some burned media on a on a cdr right like they're going to charge you 17 dollars for this uh this public record and and at this point that's extra stupid because i would accept that media or that that record in any of numerous forms where it doesn't require media, where it doesn't incur that cost. You can put it in Dropbox and I'll get it from Dropbox. You could freaking post it privately to YouTube and I will get it from there. Like there are all kinds of things they could do that would not cost money and they would lose their ability to kind of stonewall. And there's that word again. Do I need, I need a stone wall. I think I have a subconscious need for a wall of stones. That's not it. To, to kind of delay justice, to keep people from, to prevent it in some cases. Like, cause some people are just like, no, nah, I'm not gonna pay seven. Like, like I was last time. I was like, I'm gonna pay zero. I paid zero for my last arrest. My first arrest was my last one, most recent one. 
and I so far have paid zero. I might go ahead now and get the, the body cam footage for the civil case. I, I think I will. I had actually gone a little bit back on filing a civil rights case on the Thompson arrest at, at the DES. I had decided, you know what? He has a good defense in terms of uh, that he was arresting me for a trespass. He wasn't arresting me for filming, right? So he wasn't violating, the officer wasn't violating that civil right per se. It was the trespass warning that he was responding to. But in the end, it's just a big muddled collaboration between the security guard and the State Department of Economic Security and the police department and that officer to deprive me of that right. So everybody just needs to be in that suit and I am going to file it. And I'm going to wait a little bit longer. I want to do more research and be sure I'm doing it right. And I also want to go ahead and have a handful of cases. I mean, I already got, uh, I already had a case against the airport for uh, threatening to arrest me for being in there, potentially, like pretty likely. And now they just went ahead and arrested me. So yeah, so why not, why don't I just get a few cases and uh, just make sure I hit the Thompson one before two years have passed by and then just do them one after another. Learn from the first one, then on to the next. And no, like no sympathy for the, the department or the city or their insurance or whatever has to pay settlements. They should pay settlements. Like they should feel something. They should pay some settlements and get a, a nice letter from their insurance company saying, we've been doing a lot of this. We're not real comfortable with it. Our actuaries had different numbers when this all started and things are changing. And, uh, you know, we can't afford it. Therefore, we can't do it for you on those same terms. So they're going to get a rate increase. The city will pay when they when they settle a civil rights lawsuit one way or another in the long run. So now I have court and, you know, I, I have no doubt and maybe I'm wrong. I'll, I guess I'll find out that it'll take the full six months again. So I'll be, I'll have this hanging over me until uh, June or so. And in the meantime, morning, in the meantime, I'm effectively trespassed from the Tucson International Airport. I bet if I went back there with a ticket in my hand, they would still uh, let me through like they wouldn't arrest me for tresp trespass if I actually was a flying passenger. So I can't claim that they're like depriving me of some right to travel that I wasn't going to avail myself of anyway. Though now I'm semi tempted to see what happens with that. <laughs> but not very because I there's I don't want to fly anywhere. And I don't even know if that would mean I'd be uh, stepping into some false requirement, probably unconstitutional requirement to get a test or to demonstrate a, a vaccine status. We got a vehicle on our path here. I wonder what's going on with that. Please tell me this is not uh, going to turn into a, a First Amendment audit on the 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 walking the multi-use path here along the the river the santa cruz river this is what a river looks like in arizona and that's pima county just got a nod Looks like probably somebody is oh you know what there was a guy standing there But I, they would, if there was anything that they were going to say to that guy, yeah, I didn't think Mr. County Worker was stopping to talk to that guy. Because that's, that's fraught with peril to have someone who just works for, like, basically what's public works 
to have him talking to some guy on the bike path about, I don't know, we've had reports or whatever. So he's probably just got some task to do down that way. And yeah, this is, this is the Santa Cruz River. Isn't it lovely? Where's the water again? Well, that comes later. When it rains, there is water running in there, I will betcha. And obviously you can see that water has run in there recently. Just even when it is rainy out, it's still not water in there. Uh, uh, in the fall, there was definitely water in these kinds of large washes slash rivers. Arroyo Grande. And so I, uh, uh, Officer Montoya, I don't know, he was just smirky McSmirkerson while we were at the airport. And he's like, what do you, what do you want? What's your point? Like, what's your deal? And I was like, truth, transparency. And he's just smirking away. And then I'm like, so why are you laughing? Am I laughing? And I'm like, okay, so now we're calling into question whether human beings can read facial expressions. All right, whatever, you know? And so we had some words and then, and then in the car, on the way to the jail, we had a nice chat about uh, uh, vacation destinations in Mexico and cartel activity. And uh, he used to work at the sheriff's office. He was an uh, assistant deputy, I think he said it was, or whatever they, it was. He didn't say deputy. He said it was something qualified by a, an adjective. He was an adjective deputy with the sheriff's department, and that was cool because he got to go more around the county see different stuff but it was sketch because your backup's like 40 minutes away and pretty much anything that happens is on you they usually then they go around solo and so that was sketchy which you know i can relate to that i wouldn't call him a coward for that like that that is sketchy like going into some potentially dangerous situation on somebody's property out in the county by yourself like the fudge that, that's 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 not even cool because <laughs> he said they were understaffed so i don't know if that's why he went to the airport police department but i think he said it was like did he say six years he's been working there uh he's the one who had the really strong fragrance the first time he stepped up to me like i literally could not handle it i had a mask on and he just stepped up to me and it was like oh my god like, cologne bath i mean not as bad as some of the college guys man the, the, the guy, some of the guys on the university of arizona campus have not learned how much cologne is plenty they are pushing the boundaries i don't even understand how they breathe but uh, he also had that hearing issue where he just walked up and was like what's going on i can't hear <laughs> well, then how are you gonna ask me what's going on and listen to my answer i can't hear you what what <laughs> but we held a conversation just fine i don't know if he had a earbud in that day or what but this is 28 29 minutes and oh there's a somebody living down in the trees i think there's a person down there who has a home maybe this maybe several there might be more than one Seems like a nice location. Close to the jail for easy access. Well, and now I'm, I'm questioning whether I want to post that. I'm actually, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna cut that part out because then again, how many people see my videos and how many of them are anywhere near Tucson and how many of those would even care to do anything about that? I just didn't want to, yeah, I guess I'll leave it in. I don't, it probably doesn't. There's more people that see their camp just biking or walking by on this path than we'll see it from a video. So.
So anyway, I am in post-arrest mode, not going back to the airport for six months or so. Boom, mission accomplished for them. That's a and, and that's a that's a hole. That's a big hole in the legal system. Like, uh, I'm not a journalist working on a story for a, a company. And if I was, I would I would probably have handled that differently. I wouldn't have been arrested. But uh, but as an independent journalist working on the story, I was going to continue with that story at the airport. I really was. And now if I go back there, I am subject to arrest. Whether so in the end, six months from now, it's found out that the arrest was unlawful. Boohoo, what happens? Nothing. I just don't get to go to the airport for six months and then I don't end up in jail. That's it. Is there any consequence for them? Not until a civil lawsuit is filed. Like there's just no consequence to them for, for like egregiously screwing up. Like I just don't see how there's anything but just like jaw dropping uh, ineptitude in a police department showing up and being like, we're, we're wrong, but we're gonna arrest you anyway. Like, and will anything change? Like, that's the thing that tells me it's not stupidity. Like the, the chances that it's just these folks being mistaken are vanishingly small. Every time something like this happens, the chance kind of goes down that it's just a mistake. It's just a, oops, oh, they didn't know. They didn't know their job. Bull pucky. If they didn't know, they didn't know because they weren't taught, right? And if they weren't taught the correct nature of that airport, that's pretty dang bad. I mean, that is like a complete failure of that agency. Like they are just incapable of doing the job that they're funded to do. <laughs> based, based, I think that's fair to say, based just on this one arrest. Like if, if the, the police can't uh, figure out, and, and I guess, well, wait, is there some potential that I'm just wrong that the Tucson Airport Authority is somehow the private owner of the international airport and that they have a police department that is like AZ Post certified, they're public law enforcement officers, but they work for a private company? Is there some chance that I'm just wrong about that? <laughs> like, it's bizarre. Like, it's it amounts to, I mean, there are plenty of people out there who will say that those are an occupying force. And it really basically amounts to that. That's. Uh, that's a, a, an agency claiming private ownership of a public property and using their delegated powers uh, of deprivation of liberty and use of force if necessary to secure that to enforce something that isn't true to a degree that just defies credibility in terms of accepting it as an accident or a failure or uh, bad training. Like, oops, we didn't know it was public property, public access. Oh, we're sorry, I was gonna say, if I'm talking like them, they're not gonna say they're sorry. Like the police, the Tucson Police Department never sent me a letter saying, hey, I saw that you, uh, you know, we're found not guilty of that trespass we arrested you for. Just want to say, hey, we're sorry about that. You know, here's how we messed up and here's how we're going to prevent that from happening again to you or other people. And by the way, we've, you know, quashed the the trespass warning that, that we have on file from that private property owner. I'm still trespassed from that property. Uh, not guilty of the arrest, but I didn't, I haven't bothered to try to follow up with Larson Baker properties to see if they want to go ahead and untrespass me 
from their giant plaza over there full of various places I might or might not ever want to go. So, I guess uh, now in terms of getting, I was just thinking about how this is just a walkabout, kind of a nice, nice walk to share with the world, but it's not what we come to a, a channel that's generally focused on First Amendment activities and cop watches to see. Uh, and it's just a verbal rundown of what we're going to see on the uh, cameras of what happened today at the airport. By the way, yeah, I mean, I guess I was going to say something about people calling. If you want to call, I, I guess it's not probably all that useful or, I mean, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable calling uh, based on what somebody said. Like, so I wouldn't recommend that anybody calls the Tucson, and I, I'm not saying this ironically, I really wouldn't recommend that anybody call the Tucson Airport Authority Police Department until I get that body cam footage and make that video. So you can see what happened and then you can call to ask your Johnny Five-O style questions or voice your dissent uh, or ask whether you'll be safe going to the airport if you're if you are or aren't a ticketed passenger, if you're, uh, if you're arriving at Tucson International Airport and you come out the gates and you're done being a ticketed passenger, you're not flying out, you're still there to get your baggage. Are you now under a different set of rules that constrain your behavior? Should you watch out for the, you know, if you wanna know these things, if you happen to be flying to Tucson, then, then I would say after the video, give them a call, ask them what's up with that. Uh, and, and that leads me to think out loud at this moment that I'm going to go ahead and request the body cam before uh, before I get into the into the at the point of doing discovery for the court case. So I'll go ahead and and get the body cam so it can be out there sooner. I have to pay their ridiculous, ridiculous charges for digital media because they just can't get it to you anyway but the one that's kind of outdated and costs money and I'll do that because in the in the scheme of things those amounts of money aren't that great it's not that big a deal it was a big deal to me on principle the first time to, to pay nothing to just be like okay well your unlawful arrest doesn't obligate me financially to anything in this process and to and to demonstrate that to myself and just whatever to have that on record you can get arrested you can beat the charge you can spend zero dollars that's the way it should be if you don't want to get that body cam footage you don't want to pay them whatever their 24 dollars of extortion i said 17 i don't know where i got that i think it's more actually uh, for that public record that they're obliged to maintain by law you know if you don't want to pay for it you don't have to and if your case is solid you can I i'm telling you if you are auditing or anything else and you get arrested and you're really clear that it's unlawful and you can look at that statute and you can you can believe that you're right you don't need an attorney you know you can i'm serious just watch a channel like rakita law for uh in the time leading up to your trial and i tell you you watch uh cases that are sort of in the in the national spotlight and you'll see how court works and there are a lot of things that translate from you know, federal and state court down to uh, city or county court. And you can learn enough in the six months that you'll probably have if it's anything like Tucson, you can learn enough to defend yourself from a stupid uh, trespassing charge, an unlawful trespass. Like that was, that was, I 
pretty sure. I mean, I guess I have no way of knowing how close that was, but I'm pretty sure that was a slam dunk because that part was the bench trial. That was the judge saying, okay, well, I'm gonna consult with colleagues, look at the law, look at the case law, figure out what's, what's lawful at this point. And that was a, that was a slightly uh, unusual case, I guess, though to my mind, that was, a, that was a lesson I took away from that. Is it something that seems crystal clear and plain as day and simple to me, it wasn't, didn't seem that way to the officer on the scene or he chose to ignore it. Uh, didn't seem that way to the prosecutor when they d determined to go ahead and press charges and kept going ahead and pressing charges through all the, the chances they gave me to miss an appointment and end up with a warrant. And it, and it wasn't plain as day to the judge himself who was, uh, I, I kid you not, his name was Judge, what was it? Bernard or something? And he, he looked like Bernie Sanders. And he even like seemed a bit like Bernie Sanders. And, uh, and he, was, he was actually, I, I couldn't, I wouldn't have, if I had to go back and do that over, I would not try to get a different judge. He seemed like he was really just looking at the case. Like, it didn't seem like he had an ax to grind. He didn't think the police are always right. He didn't think someone who looks like me is always wrong. Uh, you know, I mean, that's probably not too hard to find in a judge, but y you never know. What this? Am I at the UN? <sighs> World tour here. We went to Stonehenge, and now we come to the United Nations building. Pretty sure. I mean, this has got to be the United Nations, right? Or, alternately, it is the, it is the Boris Kozolchik building. Good enough. I don't know what that is. I don't have a clue. It's a building named after a guy, I assume. I mean, it could be a cow. I don't know. That is a lot of flags and a sort of like stately looking building in terms of something that the state would build and maintain. So maybe it is, maybe it is a, uh, well, let's find out. <laughs> there is a no trespassing sign over there behind that tree branch. I kid you not, I swear it's there. It says no trespassing. But that's over there. Do I have any more I want to say about that case? I was in the process of saying that you can defend yourself. Oh yeah, and that something might seem... <laughs> and then I turn around and say, Okay, city of Tucson founded 1775. The city itself? Or this building? Or what? What is it? You can defend yourself and things that seem really clear might not seem so to everybody. You'd be surprised. Um, letter carrier. So they've got this letter from June. Please ring doorbell and use the intercom. NLCIFT management. I don't know what that is. Uh, it's an Energy Star certified building. Maybe this will tell us something. little wider audience for that artist. It is the National Law Center for Inter-American Free Trade. Let me out of here. <laughs> I'm just going to go away. <laughs> I don't want anything to do today with the National Law Center for Inter-American Free Trade. I mean, they'll tell me that I'm interfering with someone's business and have me held in a storage container on some ship near Cuba or something. I'm just going to go. <laughs> now, I'm sure that's a legitimate uh, focus for an audit or so, a tour. Kind of looks like the building's closed up right now. 
letter on the door since June. They all unfortunately passed away of the dreaded disease. The pandemic that has brought all of this to a screeching halt. Screech! So you can defend yourself and you have to you have to be ready and that's one of the things I think if you haven't watched a lot of course court cases one of the first things you need to learn is that you do have to spell everything out. You know, you you have to be ready to make the case that that officer was employed by that department and did indeed affect that arrest and did make those verbal statements and all that crap that's easy enough to adduce as evidence through their own body cameras. Uh, so it's not like it's pulling teeth, but you gotta make sure that you, you make every pertinent point of your case during like there in court. And in that case, the, the DES arrest, it, it hinged on the fact that the security guard, and this is the part that seemed clear as day to me, security guard employed by Central Alarm, hired by the property owner, Larson Baker Properties, who I do intend to focus on in some way or another. I'm, I'm curious to learn a little bit more about them and any history they might have, because they have a lot of properties around. And I might actually contact them and see if they're willing to rescind the trespass warning. Um, I could have just got on a bus from the jail. There's a bus stop right across the road, but I just kind of felt like working out a little nervous energy on a walk on the loop trail was right here. So that just seemed like I'm actually going way beyond where I would have wanted to go. I don't have any reason to come this far north. But uh, I had planned a bigger chunk of my morning to be at the airport, so I don't know. Quite haven't decided what else I'll do today. Um, but yeah, so that it hinged on that guy being uh, the question of whether that security guard was in control of the DES's rented property when he issued me the trespass warning. He asked me to leave for the first time after the police arrived on camera, I had recorded the whole previous incident. He himself did not state, he didn't lie about having asked me to leave, which is in itself somewhat unusual, right? But if even if he had, I had our entire interaction recorded already. So he issued a trespass warning to me while I was on the rented property. And I think some of it had to do with the fact that I was on the sidewalk outside the building, but there's, I mean, see, and that could have been some legal snap hole, snafu, loophole, loop trail, some legal loop trail that just keeps you going around in circles in jail. You know, I, I could have lost that case. I could have lost that and had, had that on my record. So at the same time that I say you can defend yourself you can totally defend yourself from a bogus charge. Uh, don't go getting into court because like you have strong feelings. Like make sure you know what you're getting into. What are you doing? What are you doing? You wanna come and say hello? You think that would be safe? It would be, it would be. It'd be totally safe if you came and said hello to me. Yeah, you could just come right over here. You could, yeah. You're like, no, I don't wanna be on camera. Do you wanna be on camera? Is it okay if I film you? Why don't you come over here? Yes. Why don't you come here? Watch for bikes. You want me to come off of the trail? Are you smart enough not to step onto the trail because you know that the bikes come on the trail? Yes. Okay, you guys can surround me. I feel safe. You can come up behind me and sniff me and stuff. It's okay. Yeah. It's all right. Hi. You want to come over here? Do you want to come over here? I know you do. I know you do. Yes, you do. Come on. Come here. Dog. I'll say I'll, I'll say your name is Dog. Hey, Dog. Dog, come here. Come here, Dog. 
Come here. Come here. Come over here. Come over here. Yes, come over here. You just come over here. You just get over it. Just get over it and come over here. Yeah. Uh-huh. Come on. Yep, that's right. You're right. No, you're not coming over here. All right, I'm just gonna let you do what. Oh, now you're gonna are you gonna bark at the sirens? You're gonna howl at the sirens? Are ya? Woof, woof. All right, your park. I'll let you have your park back. Well, just so you know, next time, next time, remember, it's okay. Just keep that in mind for next time. See, nothing bad happening. Anyway. I like that there are dogs just running around that probably, I assume, I mean, they got collars and they look kempt. So I assume they live in the neighborhood. I know a lot of people would be like, oh my God, there's a law. That's, so I'm all about transparency and like, if there are laws, we should abide by them. Uh, but uh, there are some laws that I certainly don't agree with. And when you, and you, if you don't abide by them, then you're not really doing anything morally wrong. You're just running the risk of some enforcement activity. And that's how I feel about something like that. Like neighborhood dogs are generally a safe concept. You know, it's when you get some uh, overly hyped up like younger male dog uh, who's maybe aggressive, maybe not treated that well, maybe even treated badly on purpose to prepare them to fight and they're running around loose and like you know dogs are unpredictable they can do whatever for whatever reason but then again they're kind of not like an individual dog is unpredictable but dogs on the whole are pretty predictable like those little dogs are going to bark at somebody they're not going to come up and like start tearing chunks of flesh off of my calves you know they just get to run around the park and you know, of course, nobody's picking up their poop. That is a thing. Somebody should. If you know your dogs run around the park free, that's awesome. Hopefully, they're friendly enough to come up to people and let people have a little canine company if they're into that kind of thing. I, I like getting some dog time. I, I had dogs as a kid. Uh, I miss it to some extent, but I've never wanted to commit to that as an adult. And so I appreciate other people's dogs a lot and getting to hang out with them. But uh, I don't think it should be, I don't think it should be a crime for dogs to just run around in a neighborhood. It's sort of uh, an example of freedom. How do these animals behave if they have their freedom? For the most part, they're gonna be pretty well behaved. They're gonna be interested in meeting people and smelling their smells and eating their treats and getting their scritchies, right? That's what dogs are gonna be into if they're not stressed. And that's kind of how people are too. We're gonna be into meeting each other and <laughs> smelling our smells and getting our scritchies and uh, kind of leaving everybody free to do the same. You know, there's plenty of park. And on that note, stay out of court if you can, because you lose freedom. You get, you get in wrapped into a court case, you're now obliged to keep going back to court to pay money for documentation to help you win your case to be sure that you win your case but if you do end up in court don't don't pay a lawyer if, unless i mean if you've got the money and you want to be sure and the case is complex at all go ahead and pay a lawyer but uh you can you can beat a simple stupid charge on your own with a little bit of effort and that's tucson today Say